to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hey, welcome everybody to Score Art Glass, where I help to help you discover the beauty of stained glass, learn tips, tricks, and techniques so that you can create your own stained glass artwork. And if you're new to the channel, uh, I hope you will subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you will get notified when I go live, uh, when I have other artist spotlight interviews, or when I load new content to the channel. Um, and if you like like the channel, be sure to hit that like button below uh, if you're enjoying the stream. Um, and then at the end of the stream, I will be making a special announcement. So uh, you wanna stay tuned for that. Uh, with that, I'm so excited uh, about our guest tonight. Uh, it's an amazing artist. And uh, I've been kind of, you know, I've been following her on Instagram and then uh, before, uh, like I said in my last stream, she was presented to me on YouTube and I wasn't, I didn't know she was on YouTube. So I saw, I saw she was on YouTube and, uh, I you know, started, uh, subscribe to her channel there and started following there too. Amazing artist. Um, and with that, with that, let me go ahead and introduce our artist spotlight guest is Rachel Kendrick. Rachel Kendrick is the creator of some bear glass craft. She has been making stained glass artwork since June of 2019 and is fully self-taught. She decided to make creating stained glass art her full-time job in June of 2020. And since then, she has generated over 800 sales through her Etsy site from shop updates and custom commissions. Score Art Glass is excited to spotlight this amazing artist. Please give an SG Live welcome to Rachel Kendrick of Sun Bear Glasscraft. Hey, Hello. Hey, welcome, welcome. <laughs> what an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
so much happy that you are able to join us tonight, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, so, Rachel, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. So, of course, you know, my name is Rachel. Uh, first and foremost, I'm obsessed with bears. So that's where the sun bear comes from. Um, I'm a full time stained glass artist. I have been for over a year now and uh, I have some chihuahuas that are just like my love and joy in life. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's me. I have I work in a shed like. Oh, you got a she shed. For? Yeah, <laughs> yes. I have a glass she shed. My sun shed is uh, what I call it. <laughs> Bears. <Yeah. laughs> yes. All right. Awesome. So um, tonight we're going to actually talk about transitioning to a full time job uh, yes. and your experiences in doing that. So let's kind of just jump right in. What um, what kind of led you to that? Uh, I guess fruition to say, hey. I'm going to go full time. Sure. So that a lot, a lot, a lot of my inspiration to do that actually came from uh, my now fiance who has been running his own business for five or six years. And he has just, he's an entrepreneur and he was like, you, you need to, you need to do this. You need to find something. You need to work for yeah. yourself. Um, get away from the job that, cause I had a job and I, I loved the people I worked with, but it was just, like not what I wanted to do. Um, I worked really long hours and I was just not very happy. So he was constantly like, you need to find something. You need to do something, do something artistic because he knew I loved art. So it was like me just being like, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> and uh, eventually I found stained glass and then obviously we're here now. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just recently you, you know, kind of moved and you had a lot of things happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> a lot. The there year. were <laughs> a lot. Last year has been crazy busy. So, and there's just been milestone after milestone. It's been really mm -hmm. awesome. So what made you choose stained glass? I mean, you said you love art. Yes. So what kind of made you choose stained glass as, as the art medium to go after? Yeah. So, um, stained glass, I, so I didn't really have an idea. Like I knew I wanted to do something artistic, but I didn't really have any inspiration. I'm, I've always been kind of the person that, um, I like jump from one thing to another and I'm like, Ooh, watercolor. And then I try it and then I do it for like a day. And then I'm like, man, there's a lot that I need to know for this. And then it like overwhelms me. I did that with embroidery, with crochet, with watercolor. So I've like, dabbled in a few things mm -hmm. a lot of things but um i saw uh i was on facebook one day and i saw a uh, a stained glass crystal so um i think it was the sweet karma bar which is like she's very well known uh, yes. i'm sure mm -hmm. yeah she's like mm -hmm. all over facebook ads and stuff um i saw a stained glass crystal and i think it just like planted an idea in my brain and mm -hmm. i was like that's so cool like i had never seen stained glass done in like a non-traditional way because you know stained glass like usually you think of like transoms and like just yeah. kind of windows and very like traditional victorian looking stuff so i saw that and i was like that's pretty cool like that's different and uh i didn't really think much else about it um after that but then there was one night that i was like laying in bed and i was trying to go to sleep i have a really active brain at night and i usually have a hard time sleeping and uh i like just thought of this like big stained glass bear face mm. um and i was like that would be so cool if i did that and i was like how hard could it be and then i just like it's <laughs> It started this like, yeah, how hard could it be? I had no idea what I was doing. And it started this like kind of uh, snowball of like, what if I did stained glass? Like, I don't know anyone who does that. That would be kind of a cool thing to like kind of break into this world and make stained glass bears and stuff. Um, so I talked to my grandpa who was a stained glass artist and he was super encouraging. And I thought about it for like six months. And then finally I was like, I'm going to do it. Like, and then Brian, of course, helped me be like, do it, do it. You need to just do it. <laughs> so uh, after six months, got my supplies and I was so overwhelmed that I didn't do much for like five months. <laughs> so, so, okay. So, you know, you, you talked about, you got your supplies and everything and then, yes. well, 
don't kill me, but you started off, which I think a lot of people do start off in small, confined space studios yeah. when they first start out. Yeah. So, you know, this was what I had seen on your Instagram and table. I mean, everything just basically right there. Yeah, no, it was everything was on that table. I had an Ikea shelf and I don't think that the, the full picture is showing, mm -hmm. but it was like a very small, like just a six foot fold out table, all my stuff. I had my glass up in the window up there uh -huh. that you can see like half of the window. And then I uh, had the other, the rest of my glass in like an Ikea, those like square Ikea shelves. Right. Uh -huh. But yeah, it was all there. And that was just an extra room in our house. Uh, we had a roommate who just up and left and we were renting a large three, two in a big city. So it was like kind of expensive, mm -hmm. just up and left. And I was like, okay, well that, that was my reading room. Like I had a couch in there and we had extra stuff and I would just sit in there and read. So it was a uh, kind of the perfect area that I could just like put my new stained glass hobby in and uh, kind of get comfy. <laughs> so now um, you're in a nice bigger shed you know, yes. a bigger area that you have, which is yes. awesome. Yeah. And, you know, and, it, you know, you, you've, you've really blossomed in a sense that I, yeah. you know, from what I've seen um, and been following you for, for a little bit. Um, so you are totally self-taught. Yes. And yeah. I'm the same way. I'm totally self-taught as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now granted I did find YouTube tutorials, although there oh, were oh, yeah. not many, oh, yeah. like there, there weren't many in back in like even 2019, there were very few, uh, like tutorial videos, at least that I was familiar with. Um, there were like maybe three big channels that I mm -hmm. found videos and I, I'm kind of stubborn though. Like I'm, 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 I'm like, I want to figure it out on my own. So a lot of my, my first project, which yeah. the reason why it took me so long was because I was stubborn is I would be like, all right, I'm going to figure this out. And then I would just like, I, it took me eight hours to cut the glass for the project. I wish that I, I have it on my table back here. So I might have to go grab it and, and present it, but it took me eight hours to cut the glass. Let me just grab it real quick. Ahead, that way you ahead. can see the, uh, and while, while the you're scale of that, it, which honestly is yeah. not, it's not crazy. Cool. Let's see. So this was my my first project. You can see the uh, little string broke off because I <laughs> put the jump ring not on <laughs> the proper spot because I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. So this took me eight hours to cut because I realized that my uh, my scoring tool was broken. And it was just like a, a constant struggle of trying to figure out. I would like cut the glass and then I was like, all right, I'm going to figure it out. I would go watch a video when I got stuck. And then I'd be like, I'm only going to watch like a minute of the video. And then I would come back and I would get stuck and then I would go back to it. Oh my gosh. It was you just like, like, I made me. it. Yeah. I made it way harder on myself than I needed to. But I think that like doing stuff like that, like I immediately failed a million times. And I think doing that and learning, like you learn that way. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't cut the glass that way. Okay. If I hold it here, it's going to just like shatter. Uh, so I think that because I was so stubborn, it kind of worked in my favor because I, I learned a lot with mm -hmm. that one darn leaf. <laughs> so, so, um, when you, when you first started out, what was the hardest, uh, part or piece of the process to get a hang of for you? I would say cutting and breaking glass. Um, not to mention uh, this project. I don't know. You can kind of see in the, the light reflection how textured the glass is. Mm -hmm. To this day, this is... So you pick texture glass. That's the to... first glass you got. I had no idea what I was doing. This was literally, I picked up this, this sheet of glass. It was an 8 by 12 and I was like, that's pretty. This is, to this day, the most difficult sheet of glass I have ever worked with because not only is it, like, wavy, uh -huh. but it has, like, it has, like, a, like, a, is multiple oh. textures to it. Like uh -huh. it, it has like just so many textures going on. Ridiculous. It's probably so. an antique glass type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I, I got it from a shop. So I, I have literally have no idea what kind of glass that is. Um, oh man. 
Yeah. But so yeah, so I, that was that was the hardest for me was when I first started yeah. was cutting the glass because it seems so um like counter like it's not intuitive because you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm just gonna like shatter this glass. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to like hide your face. Yeah. So I, I had a similar experience. I, I have um uh trouble with uh cutting glass at times as well. Mm -hmm. And it's really the inside curves. The inner inside yeah. curves have always been challenging. Yeah. And, well, I'd, I've watched tons of videos on trying to do inside curves. And I find, yeah. you know, I think I finally found my, you know, way of doing it that mm -hmm. really helps out. But yeah, yeah. Cutting, cutting's been uh, the, the hardest, but for me, it's part of my favorite. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I feel the same way. I love Oh, sorry, I just got distracted by a giant ant. We're out in oh. the middle of nowhere, so there's lots of bugs and creepy crawlies. So I just was like, oh, it's a monster ant. Um, yeah, I my favorite part, probably one of my favorite. I, I there's most of it is my favorite part, but cutting the glass when you can first start seeing a project take shape, mm -hmm. and you're like, ooh, you get to like plan the different pieces and the colors and how the you know the different waves are gonna go. Oh, it's so fun. I love it. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. I love it too. So um, when you started, you said you started what in 2019. Yes. Um, and then how long did it really spawn off into basically a, a business? You know, how long yep. did it take you to kind of make that realization that I'm going to spin this off right into a business and, and go forth? Sure. So, it was a kind of a gradual, uh, a, a, like it, it kind of evolved into that. Um, I didn't have a vision for what I wanted to do. I, I just kind of knew that I wanted to learn stained glass. I didn't honestly think that it would, I, I didn't know how it was going to be feasible for me to do mm -hmm. it full time or to for me to even make money off of it because it was just like I started I think I started in, in June of 2019 was when I first got all the supplies and I bought that cursed piece of glass. <laughs> um, June of 2019, I didn't finish that leaf until I think August of 2019. So like the soldering, just I just was like so anxious that I just like didn't touch it for a month. Um, but then I slowly um, just started like drawing out designs, mm -hmm. making things that I thought were really cool and just kind of practicing. Um, I, I think I sold my first piece in September of 2019. I think my, it was to my grandma. She, my grandma was my first sale. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her. And then um, it just kind of like slowly uh, evolved. I The word got out. I posted on my Facebook and I started doing commissions. So I did some like Ohio State block O's um, for some people for Christmas. I had like a video game commission for Christmas of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, like I, I was posting on TikTok too. Um, TikTok was like a huge like key to me being able really? to okay. spread the word. Yeah. I joined TikTok uh, in November of 2019 and my, I was like the only stained glass person on TikTok at that point. I didn't, I couldn't find anyone else unless they were just hidden and the TikTok like search function didn't work very well, but I got a lot of visibility that way. And I was able to like cross promote my Instagram and I was like doing like min miniature, like one minute tutorials on TikTok basically. And uh, like, I just, it kind of just slowly built from there. I got a lot of uh, commissions from TikTok and that was basically all I was doing was just like commissions in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yay grandma, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's go over to the chat and just kind of welcome some of our guests. Um, yeah. So it looks like we've got Kuya P. Kuya, yeah, Kuya's. <laughs> Welcome. Um, and then uh, we have a Jay Wisher. Yes, hello. Hello. I see welcome. Renee is in here as well. Renee, uh, they come awesome. to my streams too. Okay, awesome. Well, pre appreciate you guys coming over. Jupiter 5. Yes, thank you all for being here. Thank this you is all so for fun. Coming over. And Bull Straight, let me guess, that's somebody you know. <laughs> 
I wonder who. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate it. If, if you guys have questions uh, about, you know, what we're talking about and want to ask Rachel or myself something, just put a cue in front of the uh, in front of the question so we can easily spot it and we'll do our best to answer it. Um, yeah, and I think uh, Jay uh, Weiser, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name Weiser. wrong. Um, my TikTok is Sunbear Glasscraft. So all of my social media mm -hmm. is uh, just Sunbear Glasscraft. My Etsy is Sunbear Glasscrafts with an S on the end, uh, unfortunately, because the my actual name was taken. I don't know who they are, but they took my name. <laughs> <laughs> At one point in time, they took my name on Etsy. So, uh, yeah, that's um, everything is signed by Glasscraft otherwise. Oh, okay. Also, welcome, Renee Viola. Welcome to the stream as well. Renee was on my previous stream uh, when I was doing my soapbox. I don't ah, know if you, very if nice. you saw that soapbox that I was doing. <laughs> it was this little soapbox thing. Um, oh, you can't see it. I'm, I've got it. Uh, got a blocked this little soapbox yeah <laughs> uh it's a three-dimensional actually this is my first three-dimensional Ooh. Piece. so not i can't do 3d <laughs> i refuse it's all you it's all you <laughs> so and it, it was it was a commission so mm -hmm. um asked asked me if i could do it and i was like hey I'll go after it. I'll, I'll, Why not? I'll take it on. Why not? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, we have Jay Wisher asking, what is TikTok? Huh. Uh, it's a new it's a, uh, a platform uh, that you can uh, post videos to and promote different, uh, different things. Uh, video real quick. You know, I, I'm on TikTok, but I don't utilize TikTok as much. So. I, I haven't been <laughs> using it as much either, either. But thank you for the follow. I see that uh, they commented that they're following me now. And Jupiter, yes, I'm in a new office. So I moved and I now have a shed. I'm in a shed. So it's pretty awesome. But awesome. it's kind of cute. There's mushrooms and forests. Yeah, it fits, <laughs> it fits the whole sun bear vibe. Yes, we are in the forest. And also Chelsea is here. So thank you for being here, Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea, uh, welcome. Yes. I have uh she is a has ordered many goat portraits from me. So ah. she yes. Oh yeah, those goats are nice. Yep, really, yep. They are really like good. it's the I I, that's like the strangest thing. There's so many strange things that have come from TikTok and like micro niche, like my micro niche of like goat portraits and stained glass. I love goats and I've always loved goats. So the fact that I was like, I get to make a bunch of goat portraits and stained glass now. Okay, this is awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> it's crazy. TikTok is really like, I, I've complained about it many times before, but it's super awesome. Like I've met my best friend on TikTok and like I have met so many cool people. So mm. it's a great platform. I've been frustrated with it lately though. I haven't been on uh. it as much, but <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> okay. Well, well, let's get into some of the, que uh, I've got some questions for you as well. Yes. Um, so you, you briefly kind of touched on how you got started in stained glass. Was there some inspiration that kind of pushed you into stained glass? Are you inspired by certain uh, stained glass artists or? Um, I would say, I mean, the, the sweet karma bar was my number one. Like I saw all of her work and I was just like in love because, you know, her presentation is, if you're not, if anyone is watching, who's not familiar with the sweet karma bar, she is like, just makes the most beautiful stained glass, like crystals and just like in mm -hmm. the way she yeah. takes pictures are so beautiful. So like you, it's just her, everything she does is super dreamy. So I thought that that was super cool. That was definitely like a huge inspiration for me in the beginning. Um, otherwise, I mean, I, um, one of the first people I actually talked to about stained glass uh, was Colorado Glassworks. And she gave me some pointers whenever I was first getting started. I think at that point she had like maybe nine eight or nine thousand uh mm -hmm. followers on instagram and so she was like a little she felt a little more approachable than she is now she's like sixty thousand or so now oh, wow mm -hmm. so she gave me i don't know if you're familiar with her work or not um but she gave me a lot of pointers and so she definitely helped me and mm -hmm. inspired me to you know do certain things so oh that's cool that's yeah cool. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, Jupiter Jupiter Five got to come in in there. <laughs> The that keeps, Rachel, that employed. keeps Rachel employed. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> there have been many months where I'm like, thank gosh, I have these goat portraits. Doing art full time is so amazing, but there's definitely there's there's been some road bumps. There's it's it's bound to happen. So uh -huh. those goats have sustained me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so you know. You know, we talk about stained glass and the different processes, but, you know, some people um, prefer Tiffany versus the uh, leaded. Mm -hmm. And Tiffany is the foiled method. Um, yes. It's originally called Tiffany method, but everybody calls it the copper foil method. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's more commonly known as. Yeah. Um, but which do you kind of prefer um, well, working with? I prefer Tiffany style because I've never done or the copper foil style because I've never done leaded glass before. Um, I have I know a little bit about it and I've seen um, I, I call them my mentors. Um, it's the people that own the shop that I used to go to to buy all my glass and supplies. They make giant windows. The lady has been doing stained glass for 33 years or something. Oh, wow. So I would, you know, go in there and, you know, I would, be nosy and see what they were doing. And uh, every time they were working on a giant leaded window, uh, it was like they were just, they hated it. They hated every second of it. They're like, if you move this piece over here, then this one moves here. And it's just, it always seemed like torture. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So, uh, I, and I think I'll probably end up staying mostly with Tiffany style because mm -hmm. um, I really like tiny details, tiny pieces. I love it. It's my mm -hmm. favorite. So but see, I'm opposite of that. I don't like those tiny pieces. <laughs> They're awful. They're so, terrible. I don't know why I like them. <laughs> They're so hard. Yeah. I got these big old thumb fingers and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's my, my like superpower. Maybe that's my secret is I have really tiny hands. Yeah. So it makes tiny pieces possible. That's, that's actually my biggest kept secret is I have the tiny hands for tiny pieces. <laughs> So, I mean, you do some uh, painting in yours as well yes. uh, as yep. part of uh, your artwork. Mm -hmm. um, what type of paints do you use on your? Sure. So I um, I exclusively have only ever used uh, Pebio Vitria 160. Um, that was what like my mentors told mm -hmm. me about. And because it was really hard for me, it's hard to find any information about stained glass paint. Like yeah. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I, luckily they told me about it. I tried it. It's awesome because mm -hmm. you just bake it in the oven. Like you don't need a kiln. Cause I, I don't have room in here for a kiln and I, that's a big piece of equipment. I know there's like microwave kilns and stuff, mm -hmm. but ugh, I don't want to deal with that. So I just love that you can just like bake it in the oven and mm -hmm. it's like super low investment really it's eight dollars right. for a bottle. And I've had one bottle last me almost two years now. So um, yeah, that's the paint I use. I love it. I tell everyone about it because it's just like I couldn't live without it at this point. Yeah. So I I, I use um, some of the enamel um, paint pens mm -hmm. that that dry that actually harden off real good. And then yeah, you can also some of those you can uh, bake as well. Okay, cool. Out. Yeah. Um, but also another thing that I've actually been trying. Uh, playing around with is mm -hmm. um, using those pins, but then using um, gel nail polish mm -hmm. and then curing it with the ultraviolet light. Yep. I've heard about that before. I haven't tried it, um, but I've definitely, um, I've heard of people doing that like with jewelry as well, like stained glass jewelry. So mm -hmm. that's definitely a useful, it's a good idea right there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to try a couple uh, with that and see kind of how it turns out and just yeah. let it sit and just see if it, the thing I get nervous about is if whether or not it yellows out, but they say it doesn't yeah. yellow out. Yeah. So, you know, every time you use clear stuff, it seems like the pigment, I guess, in the clear sometimes yellow out. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so for I don't, sure. I don't know. Yeah, so. there's that's why I'm I'm so nervous to like try anything. Like I'm I once I have something, I'm like so set in my ways because I'm mm -hmm. like, if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like I I like my paints, like I haven't wanted to venture out and try anything else just because it's like I haven't really needed to. So mm -hmm. my 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 knowledge is very minimal. I'm just like Pebio Vitria. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> that's my one one trick. 
Yeah, I've, I've heard people talk about Pebeo Vitro 160. And yeah. I, I just, I haven't tried them yet. So uh, mm -hmm. that's probably going to be, I love trying new stuff and just yeah. working with different mediums and, yeah. and just trying to different things with stained glass. So uh, I'm an explorer. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'll let you do the exploring. I'm so terrible. I'm just like, I don't want to. I'm nervous. I don't want to. But yeah, I, of course, recommend like they're um they're so fun to work with. They're a little like it takes a little bit to like like get used to the consistency. Um, mm -hmm. the the paints are very uh, when you first get them, they're very transparent, but like the paint itself is thick. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. so it's like can be a little bit tricky to work with because you're like, this should be more opaque, but it's not. So so does it go on pretty easily the Pebio? Or Relatively. Do you really have to soak it up into the brush and then really kind of put it on thick. It's hard to describe. Um, so it's it's very thick. It's very like mm -hmm. it's a, it has a thick consistency, but it doesn't. I wouldn't say that it behaves like a normal paint. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of times when I was using it with my liner brushes, it kind of like stays on the brush. So you have to constantly be re like dipping and reapplying. Um, so it is like it, it takes a while to get used to it takes a while mm -hmm. to kind of like learn how the paint works and learn you know how much you have to get for certain like stroke thicknesses and right. stuff so okay but i love it i know it sounds terrible but i love it <laughs> right. well no hey you do what you love and, that, and yeah that's, you know and you're a prime example of it now you're doing it full time doing what you love stained glass yeah, and <laughs> yeah. That, that's just so awesome uh it looks like uh kuya um actually said something about uh we're kind of responded as it's the same with resin sometimes they yellow out yeah. so maybe it does yellow out after over time i'm not not sure so cool um so now you know you're you're in your niche now you know you got your sun bear yes. and i saw bears today Yes, I'm making bears <laughs> literally for the first time in my two years of doing stained glass. I don't know why it took so long, but I'm finally making them. So yeah, when you told me that you hadn't made a bear yet, and then I, I was like, your logo is a sun bear. You literally, like your oh, like, logo wow. is a stained glass pattern, and you haven't made it yet. Like I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What it took me so long. I think it's just been like. Um, like focusing on my commissions. There's, I haven't, I, I don't have any stained glass that like I made just for like myself. So most of the things I've like come up with, you know, shop update themes and I've, I haven't had anyone ask me to make a bear. So I think that's, mm. that's why I'm finally doing it though. I'm like, I want yeah. a bear. <laughs> I'm making bears. <laughs> you can't stop me. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, I find that sometimes when I'm, doing uh pieces uh especially for myself so my you're probably gonna laugh but um when i first got started yeah i did small projects i had several mm -hmm. small projects underneath yeah but then i said okay i i think i got this i think i know how to do this so i jumped to a big piece a big panel for <laughs> yeah, myself I got this. Yeah. and that's that mount fuji project that i have <sighs> yeah and it's still sitting on my table. It's been over a year. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How big is it? It is a 20, what, 26 by 28, I think. I would probably still just not be doing it as well. So I don't <laughs> even blame you. I would just, I'd be in analysis paralysis for the rest of my life with doing something that large. So. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've got to the point where it's foiling and I've been doing it on my live streams. So, yeah. you know, but then okay, I, good. Take, I, <laughs> I got basically kind of forcing me to, <laughs> to do yeah. it. Yeah. That's but then I got frustrated. Awesome. Then I got oh. frustrated. Then I had to, I had to stop the live stream on those <laughs> and then work on other projects. Uh, commission projects and so forth like that. So, oh, I have but, been frustrated on many a stream, but you just, I'm just like, I have to keep going. Yes, yes, yes. Pieces just don't cut the way they want. They don't, yeah, just don't fit. The glass gods just it. don't, yeah, they just don't work with you. They just stuff breaks and you're just like, no. 
all of those expensive glass. Yeah. <laughs> so in your niche in the bears or well, and you know, you do bears, uh, mm -hmm. you just started in bears, but in your niche, you're everything yes. about nature. Yes. I try to. Yes. Okay. Um, do you find that niche is really where you're comfortable at, or do you think you'll explore outside of that genre or that particular area? I, I definitely want to explore out of it. Um, it's just like, it, it definitely is where I'm the most comfortable because it's mm -hmm. just what I like the most. I mean, like mm -hmm. I've had this tapestry forever. Like I love the woods and I love nature and just mm -hmm. like forests and obviously mushrooms and just all sorts of little forest. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I, I've always loved it. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been outside. Like even like when I was a kid, I would just go outside forever. And um, so I think that's why it's just like, it's an easy subject matter. Like there's just endless things that you can do. And I just love looking at it. But, oh, and I did, yeah, you just said there's some UFOs. I just yeah. saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, it has definitely been fun, like kind of going outside of that. I would say that my, uh, my, my last two shop updates ago with the, I did an otherworldly theme. Mm -hmm. So it was still kind of naturey, but it was also like UFOs and a little bit more like structural nature, which mm -hmm. I definitely had fun with, with making like the big UFO circles and, uh, like doing like star grids and stuff. I, I had a lot of fun with that. And I would like to explore um, like Gothic architecture for future pieces as mm. well. Um, I um, have a tattoo sleeve that's all uh, cathedrals, Gothic architecture, oh, stained wow. glass, of course, mm -hmm. my little stained glass part. Wow. Um, so I would love to uh, explore that more as well and kind of do some more like just like, I love like the gothic arches and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just like I love it. So that, that, that'd, be, that'd be cool. That'd be that would be yeah. cool. You know, I, I personally like uh, landscapes, but I haven't mm. produced much landscape type stuff uh, because I've been only really building patterns to be able to do landscape yeah. later. So yeah. I've been just picking and choosing and uh, yeah. different patterns and just, you know, whatever uh, commissions that, you know, uh, that mm -hmm. come in and whatever uh, the client, you know, wants. Um, mm -hmm. So w when you uh, are working on commissions, um, how do you interact with your client? I mean, you keep them uh, along the whole way um, as far as, as, you're, as you're building it and, and so forth like that. I, I try to. Um, there's definitely times that I uh, like I'll just be working on a bunch of different stuff at one time and I'll just kind of like forget to send update pictures. Most mm -hmm. people, I don't really think it, it makes a huge difference. Like they, they're just like, oh, cool. Um, but I do like to involve my clients in the entire beginning part. So I will, um, you know, take pictures of every glass option that I think is going to look good and see what they think, see if, oh, maybe they want that green to be different or they want, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially for my pet portraits, it's super, super important. Um, there's definitely been um, like with the goats, I've done so many goats at this point, but like <laughs> the, the fur color is sometimes really hard to, to match. Right. So I okay. always like to make sure I'm really like trying to stay in communication with them and be like, does, is this look like the right cream color? Um, what about this part of the nose? Like, do you mm -hmm. want this and this? And it's definitely gotten easier to do that now that I've started incorporating the paint. Um, so I mm -hmm. don't have to rely on if like there's a goat with like white on its nose, I don't have to use white glass. I can just paint the white and kind of give it more like texture and more body too. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, that has gotten easier but yeah i try to just like make sure i'm communicating a bunch with my clients and if i'm uncertain about how something is going to look too like i usually get to uh the grinding part and i'll mm -hmm. grind everything out and i'll send them a picture and be like this is where we're at and see what they think of the colors and if they don't say anything i'm like okay i think it looks good yeah. <laughs> so um yeah yeah i i actually ran into that just recently on this cat panel that i'm doing for a window mm -hmm. and I didn't like the structure of it as I mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, cutting the glass and I started placing it down. I was like, I'm not liking the structure of this. It yeah. seems kind of, in a sense, weak and it's, it's not going to be, but just in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, so I made a little modification and then I sent it to, you know, 
the client and they were like, oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, I'm glad you're going <laughs> to reinforce it, too, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use some restrip up the middle to kind of yeah. reinforce it and, yep. and so forth. But it's just those things, you know, at, at the time you sometimes don't think about it. But then as you start putting it together, you know, what does, you know, how long it's going to take you, how, you know, all these yeah. things start coming in and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, looks like we got a question that came in. So uh, let me, uh, my mouse died on me here. Okay. So it looks like, uh, Jerry Wisher, uh, how long on average does a commission take? Say something like the goats. So since you do the goats, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll yes. let you answer that one. <laughs> So um, the goats, uh, it, it's kind of like an average time. It's hard to say like a specific, like it always is going to take this much because there's so many different, um, like all my goats have different numbers of pieces and some have more painting on them. Mm. I would say on average, my goats take anywhere from 10 hours if they are very simple. Um, although it's, it, I would say that's probably a very low, low estimate because with my goats, I, I do like, flo like flowers and stuff around the, the, the border. And then I do, uh, I paint their names on it as well. So I would say 10, if I am like on the ball, like just like super flying through it and like just everything is working, I would say probably 12 to 14 hours is a more like accurate time like 10 is probably the shortest it's ever taken me but 12 to 14 is usually more more accurate i would say and and those are how big how big of a size are they're they? about eight and a half inches eight in eight diameter inches. Okay. Yeah. so um a lot of the 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 timing too is like i will um like i'll draw it out and they're you know that size and mm -hmm. there's some of the pieces are so stinking small <laughs> There was there was this one portrait I did. You can have the small piece. Oh my god! Sometimes I I just like I look at my pattern once I print it out, and I'm like, why did I do this to myself? But it's <laughs> it in the end, it always ends up looking great. Good. Mm -hmm. Um, the one <laughs> that happened recently, um, it's actually in the little like slideshow video uh -huh. that you played. Uh, it was a goat named Rigby, and mm -hmm. he's the cutest little goat ever. He always had his bottom teeth showing in all the pictures. So I painted him with his little bottom teeth showing, but we did two flowers on the bottom and one was a little sunflower and one was a daisy and the daisy pieces. I am not even kidding you. They were like a piece of like a long grain piece of rice. Like they were so <laughs> small. I was like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> it was ridiculous. No. Uh, it was ridiculous, but it looked really good once it was done. So so on those small pieces, so I, like I said, I, I don't like small pieces, but I do have some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, They're unavoidable at times. Unavoidable. Yeah. Um, so do you, uh, when you actually put your uh, small pieces on and the foil, mm -hmm. because, you know, the foil overlaps so much, you know, even though you're using, you know, yeah. say the smallest size you can. Yeah. Do you find yourself trimming back just so you could have some more class showing? Yeah. I, there have been many a time that I use the smallest foil possible and then I still have to use my little exacto knife. It, use my <laughs> magnifying glass and like, just like barely be able to squeak out some glass. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's fine. I, I love doing like the, the nitpicky itty bitty tiny details, even though it mm -hmm. like, I, I say like it's frustrating. I also love it. So I don't mm -hmm. know. It's this weird love hate thing mm -hmm. where I just like can't stop doing it. And I just, I think it's cause it's just like so delicate. Like, I think that's why I like it as I like how, how much detail you can like, I like cramming as much detail as you can in the tiniest space possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it just like looks really nice. So. Yeah. yeah well, they, they turned out really well though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so what's the largest piece that you've actually done? Sure. So um, it's like really not that large when it comes like in comparison to like what other people do. But for me, it was uh, an iris panel that was 12 inches wide and 21 inches tall. <laughs> there it is. There it there. is. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one gave me immense amounts of anxiety leading up to it because I was like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I don't know if I'm supposed to reinforce it. I don't know this, blah, blah, blah. Like, but I figured it out and it was great. So um, 
it wasn't that bad. The soldering took me an absurdly long time and I did it on a live stream. And there were so many people that came in on that live stream and they were just like, like they were just, they were just like basking in the frustration. I was getting so angry while I was doing this because I was so tired of standing, but I was really happy with how it came out. Um, yeah. The picture that was like oh, in oh, the window. Yep. Um, when I took, uh, let me see, not this picture and not this one. It's the one where it's actually in my window inside. I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to make something like this for myself. And then like a week passed and I was like, I'm literally never going to do that. <laughs> That's never going to happen. But I, I was very happy with how it turned out and my client was as well. So. Well, that that's awesome. I, it, it did turn out. It turned out beautiful. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. So would uh, I start soldering this uh, one that I've got still sitting on the table? <laughs> the dreaded Mount Fuji, the Mount, dreaded Mount Fuji one. Um, I'm going to do that live when I do yeah, that. So I very think nice. That's going to be interesting to kind of. Is that you know, leaded? No, it's all copper oh, foil. You too. said you were foiling it. Ooh. Yeah. You're going to use so much solder. And, yeah, I think it was like, I think it's 270 or 282 pieces. How many rolls of, uh, how many pounds of solder do you think that's going to be? Four? I would say uh, yeah. that's, that's four I, pounder yeah, at least. Yeah, <laughs> at least a four pounder. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm going to frame it out at that too. So afterwards. Yeah. So, Very nice. So it's going to, it's going to be fun. Uh, it is. So, um, so now, you know, if somebody wanted to start out in stained glass, you know, I, I always ask this to, to artists uh, that I mm -hmm. that I bring on is what would be uh, your best advice for someone starting out in stained glass? So best advice for starting out, I would say, is number one. Uh, don't compare yourself to other people. And I know we were talking earlier about how I am terrible about doing that. <laughs> um, but especially when you're starting out, like, don't compare yourself. Don't be like, oh, like I, this person is doing this and they're amazing because then it's just going to kind of like, it's going to be a never ending cycle of mm -hmm. like you feeling like you can't get there. Um, because there's a lot of steps involved with stained glass. Each step is its own like really intense skill set that you have to learn, like cutting the glass, breaking the glass. Like it takes a while to get used to every step. So I would say don't compare yourself with other people. And then I would also say um, do things that you like make things you want to make and don't feel pressured to go with trends. Um, I think that like going with the trends is like, can be good if you're like trying to like sell honeycombs because I know like I got on the honeycomb trend when I was first starting my business. So mm -hmm. it's definitely, but like right now there's so many stained glass artists up and coming that going with the trends is going to be kind of like, it's not going to be very helpful because there's so many people. So right. I would say like, they get saturated, you know, yeah, like it. monstera leaves and honeycombs. Oh, it's God. just like, yeah. <laughs> And like, monstera granted, leaves. granted <laughs> your girl makes a lot of monstera leaves. I have I've slowed down a little bit, but you know, it's, they're very common. So if you can find a way to put your own spin on it or uh, just make something that you are going to put the most passion into mm -hmm. um, and just like the most creativity that you possibly can, it's going to just like try to immediately just like set yourself apart. And I think that that's the best thing you can do really. Instead of just making a million honeycombs like I did. <laughs> <laughs> guilty. I'm guilty. 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 So yeah. yeah, so that is that is one of the things that I, you know, the most common ones I see are feathers, mozzarella leaves, and honeycombs. Those are the yep. three that I see the most of. Yep. And yep. granted, feathers, feathers and honeycombs are probably pretty easy to make in a sense because yeah. you can dictate the cut on the on the uh uh feathers yeah but, and then it's a pretty strict cut on the yeah. honeycomb so absolutely and i think that's partially what it is what is it because is. it's mm -hmm. so um it, it's so easy it's so beginner friendly so mm -hmm. i mean that's why like the the pattern that i have up on that's free on my youtube is a monstera leaf because mm -hmm. it's pretty straightforward i'd say it's a, there's some 
cuts in it that are a little bit le more than beginner, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, just like with some little concave or uh, yeah, like the little concave parts, little. Right. Um, but yeah, like honeycombs, you just have to cut one pattern, one little pattern piece. I still have my first honeycomb pattern. Uh, it's the one comb to rule them all. I have it written on there and that's what I like do all my honeycombs with. But yeah, it's hard because it's easy. So it's mm -hmm. good practice for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So one of the things I always uh, uh, let people know is when you, when you start practicing your cutting, mm -hmm. just go find some cheap clear glass yes and absolutely. cut on it to learn your cutting technique and how much mm -hmm. pressure you got to do because I, I honestly think that is the hardest thing to learn is yeah to cut because if you don't make your score marks right then you know if you don't if you relieve pressure on it as you're cutting then it's not going to actually follow that <laughs> that score mark and it's yep. going to have a mind of its own it's just going to so, do whatever it wants. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. when you actually get to those textured glass. <laughs> Stupid leaf. I love uh, it though. Then, you know, hopefully, because I find textured glass still, I mean, no matter how much you practice and how much cutting you've done. Yeah. Some of that oh. textured glass still have a mind of its own. Yeah. It just, just goes off where you don't want it to go. Absolutely. There's to this day, like, I, I don't, I think it's just always gonna like, because you just don't know like what little air pockets are in it and you don't know what like it's going on in, in there. Um, there's still glass that I cut to this day where I'm just like, Oh, okay. I guess you just went that way then. Bye. Like, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah, no, I, um, that's, that's something that I, I personally didn't do, but I have suggested that to people before, like go to thrift stores and find mm -hmm. some pictures with glass in it. And yep. just so you can get them for like 50 cents. Well, I did. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I do make the warning though, that like the, the picture frame glass is going to potentially be thinner. So it won't yeah. have mm -hmm. the exact same yeah. feel, but you can at least like, learn if you're like not to just like Ugh! you know and be so right. heavy handed and and mm -hmm. just kind of like feel a it's less intimidating than buying a ten dollar piece of glass and then being like right. wow i just ruined the entire thing buy yeah. those ten dollars <laughs> you know so no i definitely agree like if you like going out and buying like cheap picture frames and stuff like that like that's gonna be your best bet mm -hmm. in in practicing yep awesome so did we let's go check into the chat here real quick and make sure we didn't uh, miss any questions. Um, just kind of going back through here. Okay, we got the last one we had here was okay. Yep, so that that was that one. And wow, have lot lot of lot of comments going on. So uh, planning things out will be your best friend. You can really set a time for custom piece. Ah. Okay, yeah. I good. mean, that's why I gave like a, a, um, I think, and they like, I think Jay has like dealt with that before. It sounds like they mm -hmm. do tattooing where it's so hard to like really estimate how long something takes. That's why I usually the easiest way for me to calculate my pricing is price by piece. Um, mm -hmm. because I've been doing yeah. it long enough to where I kind of have an idea of, okay, if this has 50 pieces in it, it's probably going to take me somewhere around 12 to 14 hours, depending on, you know, the, the details in it. So, mm -hmm. um, that's how I do it is I, I price by piece. I see if that, if I think that that's going to be how it's going to match up is like, you know, if, oh, this is going to take me 12 hours and then pricing mm -hmm. is so hard though. Yeah. It <laughs> pricing is, is just it always is. terrible. I, I think what I want to do is I want to get a panel on here and talk about pricing. Yeah, Especially, everyone you know, prices start, differently too. You know, so it, it's kind of everybody kind of does it different, you know, and you know, and also depends on the area you live in <laughs> as well. Yep, yep. Like you know? people, there's people in Canada that their glass is so expensive it's ridiculous. There's a guy I think his name is Dan. I think that was the one. He comes into my live stream. He said that. He is lucky if he can get a square foot of glass for like 25 US dollars. And that's oh, like wow. plain glass, that's cathedral glass. Like that is just like no oh, texture, wow. like just yellow cathedral glass. So uh, in places like that, like you're gonna have to charge more uh, mm -hmm. versus like, you know, I have a, a local 
somewhat local supplier and she has just like tons and tons and it's very cheap. Um, mm. So I'm like super lucky that yeah. it, it just where it just depends on where you're at and <laughs> who you know and if you find the right estate sale and. Mm -hmm. uh, I've get... never actually uh, gone to an estate sale that had saying I have never seen them in my area. Yet. Yeah. So did did you hear my story on my last live stream about the estate sale that my friend found? No, I did not. I, hey, I've never we got time. Go ahead. <laughs> I've never been to an estate sale before, but I have a friend who loves going to them. And mm -hmm. she was like, she was like, what are you looking for? Like, if I were to go, like, I see glass sometimes, but I don't know what I'm looking at. And I was like, just sheets of glass. Sometimes they're square foot. Sometimes they're bigger, pretty colors. That's it. Like that. I just, all I want is glass. So she texts me a, a, like blurry picture of this like pile of glass and she was like is this it and i was like yeah and i didn't know how much there was and she was like okay i just bought i just bought a bunch of glass for you and i paid 220 and i was like okay and then i went and i picked it up from her and it was like 50 square feet of like vintage and oh, like man. art glass, like bullseye, Armstrong, all these like crazy specialty glasses, like well over five to six hundred dollars, if not more of like these specialty glasses. Oh, and I was wow. just like, I was like, you did good. You did really good. <laughs> she was like, I'm wow. like, I don't know if this is good or not. And I was mm -hmm. like, you, you. You're so good. So that was a, a really good find. So there's yeah. there's some gems out there for sure. There are definitely, yeah. I've I've gone over. I've actually, I live near Kokomo Glass. Ah yes, I've always wanted to go there. Yes. So it's about two and a half hours from me. Gotcha. And um, and I go up there at times uh, mm -hmm. just to make the drive up there. Yeah. And they actually have these big scrap bins. Yes, I've heard about them. They're like and, $1, oh, right? I, yeah, a dollar a pound, basically. <sighs> and I go and that's I like, rate those. And that's like heaven. <laughs> so, yeah. I came back with like, uh, the last time I went, I came back, I think it was around 45 pounds worth of glass. And it was Beautiful. like, oh, nice. You know, yeah. granted it's smaller pieces, but I mean, it, you know, some of the pieces are like this big. Yeah, that's, that's like finding <laughs> gold. Yes. So I love it. And then I've gone to another sale that's over in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they have an annual, uh, like October, right. Actually right around this time, their yeah. fall sale. Yeah. And some of this, you know, 12, $13, uh, uh 12 by 12 sheets mm -hmm. are like five bucks. Mm, it's so, so, so good <laughs> it's worth the drive to go yeah. over to some of those sales you know yeah and stuff like that yeah i've always wanted to um stop by the wismock factory too mm. um because my grandparents live in ohio so i'll like ah, drive up okay. to see them because i hate flying and i have i, st I still haven't done it yet but i want to stop uh at the wismock because i think it's in west virginia mm -hmm. um so it'd be a little detour but it would still be i think they have the same thing like the the one dollar per pound glass oh, scraps wow. yeah. and uh, give me all that wismock give it <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it's always always good yeah um there was one comment in in here that uh oh, what was it oh you were talking about the daisies earlier mm -hmm. and uh, chelsea said the daisies are yeah. so perfect yes that is so. my my goat lady my goat lady <laughs> so many cute goats it was so funny my um my mom like i told her about the the goats because um, she has a herd of 19 goats and we're doing portraits of all of them. So mm -hmm. my mom was like, she was like, how, how can you do that many portraits? Like, do the goats all look that different? And I was like, yes, they all have their own little personalities. I'm doing, I'm doing, working on one right now. And it is like, she has the cutest, she is, um, all of her fur is black. And then she has some mm -hmm. like little white spots and she has this like curly brown hair all over her body. Oh, so like wow. she has this like cute little 
like black face and then just like these crazy curls. So cute. I just love it. And I, <laughs> I might be a little partial because it made like, I was like, if I feel like if I was a goat, I would look like that. Like I just be this, <laughs> this weird little goat with like all this curly hair, but I love it. She's so cute. Like they're all of, they all like, I, I love doing pet portraits in general too because mm -hmm. I'll get pictures and there you can just like I love seeing all their little personalities in their pictures and like people will send me like five or six different pictures where they're all just being crazy. It's so fun. I love it. Yeah. Oh, cool. That is awesome. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we will uh, kind of end here. I've got to go pick my daughter. Oh, she's, okay. <laughs> she, she's going to be finishing up her wonderful uh, art show. Uh, well, yeah, kind of art show tonight and so forth. So um, we're going to go uh, go get her and uh, everything. And I greatly, greatly appreciate you coming on tonight. Yeah, and thank you so much for inviting this is, me. This, this has is been so great. fun. Yes. Yeah. We have to do this again. I mean, yeah, I love absolutely. coming on here and just talking about glass and just geeking out about talking yeah, I, stained glass. I think you're the first person that I've like really talked to, like another like established artist and talked to about just like geeking out about glass. Like I haven't done it face to face before. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, Wismark, oh, Kokomo. And we're just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like most of like all the people in the chat are probably just like, what? What are they talking about? But <laughs> It's fun. I love it. It's fun. Yeah, I love it too. And I love talking glass with other glass artists because, you know, you, you can learn so much just from each other yeah. and, you know, and so forth. So, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a community on YouTube of glass artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way we can come together like this and talk and geek out and yeah. have a place to really just, you know, get together and, and just really geek out. And I actually do two what I call glass outs a year in my own studio here mm -hmm. where I will take time off from work and I will come down for an entire week and I'll wake <laughs> just, up in the morning. That's so uh, awesome. And, I, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell my family, I say, Hey, this is my glass out week. And then I will just come down and I will just play around. I'll experiment. <laughs> yeah. I'll do, you know, uh, They're like, don't go, don't go bother dad. He's glassing out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I call them glass out. Don't bother me during my glass out. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. But hey, uh, if you can do me a, a great favor, tell uh, everybody where they can uh, find you uh, on social media, uh, where they can go and look at uh, more of your work and, and so forth. Yeah, so uh, you can find all of my work basically at Sunbear Glasscraft. That's like my handle on everything. Um, my, I post most of my work on Instagram. So if you want to see like all my projects and finished work, uh, you can go on there. I also have a discord, which is going to be linked. Um, I have a link tree in my Instagram. And so if you want to kind of like chit chat and talk and post your art, because I love helping recognize other artists as well and giving tips and advice and everything, uh, you can come onto my discord too and uh you know have a place to feel free to share your work um because sometimes i know it can be awkward to like share your work and get critiques and you know have a place that you can go but everyone can post on there uh you don't have to feel like awkward or anything like i love seeing other people's work especially stained glass work um so discord instagram i think that just about covers it uh, i have a youtube as well sunbury glass craft on everything so that's All my right. spiel Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for coming out. So, hey everybody, uh, I do have a, a link to Rachel's uh, link tree. Uh, so you can uh, go find her on uh, social media in the description below. And the uh, I do want to make a special announcement. Um, I am looking at doing a special giveaway uh, when I hit the 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. Woo! Um, and you know, and hopefully I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hit it by the end of the year. Um, but I, I am going to talk about it in my next stream next week. Um, I'm kind of toying with two, two different patterns, uh, to give, uh, of, of which one I want to give away. So I may need some help on some deciding. So but you want to stay tuned for more details on that. Uh, a next week's stream. And I'll be talking about some upcoming projects. Um, I'm really excited about one big project that I'm going to be doing. Um, I've already shared it with Rachel. So, but I'm going to share that next week uh, on that stream and some uh, other projects that I'm, I'll be working out. So 
Um, again, if you're looking to start stained glass, um, you can check out uh, Rachel's channel. You can check out my channel and the playlist that we both have and, you know, and start your own journey uh, in stained glass. With that, um, I'll see you on the next stream.